So do you want to be like this guy, the number one insider trader of all time, Gordon Gecko from Wall Street? Well, you're going to need some hair gel and a big pair of you know what. Or maybe you want to be like this guy, the number one real alleged insider trader, Steve Cohen of SAC Capital. Look at this girl. So happy, smiling wide because she knows Stevie is real good on the inside. <laughs> or maybe you want to be like our best friend, Bobby Axelrod from Billions, who's actually based off Stevie Cohen. And then of course you got Dollar bill right here his partner in crime with their level of uncertainty and being not uncertain you want to be like them you want to be an insider trader which insider trading is buying and selling stocks off non-public information information you're not supposed to have which means it's illegal well of course you don't want to be like them you want to have their money but you also don't want to wind up in jail so in this video i'll show you a legal way to do that insider trading and of course what i'm about to show you is only one part of a full strategy you know to have a full strategy you better be using pricing action and that's why we created our price action masterclass to help you with that and for you to use price action the right way technical analysis can be really useful if you use it right there's a link down below in the description and comments so you can learn more about this course and do that now because it closes sunday then we're shutting it down and there's a 60 day money back guarantee so there's no risk to check it out but okay insider trading legally how do you do it well the way you do it is by monitoring insider activity something you should know is that every time someone inside a company buys or sells shares at least the top guys if they reach a certain threshold they got to report that to the sec for example this form four so this document must be filed with the sec whenever there is a material change in the holdings of company insiders because if you're the management of a company you are able to buy shares of your own stock but there's a lot of rules because that technically is insider trading that's why you got to file these forms and all of that now once these forms are filed it becomes public information about what those insiders are doing which means that you and me can use that information legally and guess what if someone's inside a company and they're buying their own shares well then clearly they know something because yeah all information is supposed to be public but it's not who's gonna know what's happening to a company better the ceo of that company or you and me obviously the guy inside the company operating it so if he's buying up shares that's a great signal for us and the thing is when you're evaluating a company you do want to see that you want to see the management holding a lot of the company's shares because that means they actually believe in it this is an article from brandon at macrops by the way where he explains just how important this concept is he says that a ceo that owns little to no stock in their company makes decisions differently than if he owned a significant stake it's just like when nasim taleb said in his book skin in the game what matters isn't what a person has or doesn't have it's what he or she is afraid of losing so if a ceo owns just a little bit of stock where's the incentive to care about the long-term success of the business if the guy doesn't own any stock then he's not afraid to lose he's going to treat it as a paycheck where he might do things that are only going to help the company in the short term so that he could have a nice office fly on the jet get a bigger paycheck basically everything to pad whatever he's getting out of it and that's fine because if he's not a long-term owner of the company why should he care about the long term but if you see management and a ceo with a lot of stock well if the company's share price goes down they're gonna get hurt a lot that's why in the scene right here said that it's what he or she is afraid of losing so having that fear of loss motivating these ceos and management that's very effective because their money is on the line their skin is in the game and there's different studies that have proved this time and time again like even in the head fund industry there was a paper done by these two guys showing what skin in the game really does so what they found in their research is that higher insider ownership meaning the guys running the fund if they own more of it then the actual fund will be smaller the more the general partner which is the owner puts in the less he needs from other people so first off the pool of capital is smaller to manage and when those managers have all their own money in the fund then they're completely focused on performance and beating their hurdle rate because then is directly correlated to their investment in their own fund if they make 20% they're gonna get 20% back and this is better than when you see a big fund where the owner doesn't have too much capital in his fund because then the mentality changes a little bit they get into the asset gathering mode because the goal changes from performance to just gathering as many assets as you can so you could charge more management fees on them more assets means more money for you performance well you don't even have to do as well but if the manager has most of his money in the fund then that gets avoided because it's a smaller fund and then they're not gonna make much management fees on that small pool of money and these smaller funds generate 4.3 percent higher returns on average compared to other funds so there is definitely a difference when someone owns something you know they're going to treat it differently it's going to be better and that's what you want to look for when you're investing so there's another research paper done by these three guys and they analyze insider purchases in uk markets and what they found was that returns of those stocks that had that insider purchases were 4.4 percent higher when those buys happened over the last three months now of course if insiders are buying that's going to push share prices higher 
higher because it's just general buying pressure, but that's not where that whole 4.4% came from. It's once again, when you own something, the company is gonna perform better when those operators have skin in the game. Now, something to understand is that insider buying is a better indicator of future potential versus insider selling. So there is, of course, another study done where individual stocks with heavy insider purchasing returned 51.34% over one year. The S&P during that time frame only 15.1%. Point being there, once again, at the companies where the insiders were buying more, those stocks and the companies attached to them ended up doing a lot better than the S&P. So the buying is a good signal, but the selling not so much. Because if someone is buying their own shares, that tells us, okay, they're really confident in the company, right? But the vice versa isn't always true. If someone's selling a bunch of shares, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're bearish on the company. Because each individual management person, you know, they have separate lives. They may be trying to liquidate some of their funds because they got a lot invested in this company and diversify a bit. Maybe they want to buy a yacht in their personal life. Gotta sell some shares. There can just be a lot more factors that cause the selling versus the buying. Because the buying is pretty clear. If someone in the company is buying, they think the stock is undervalued or something big is coming that's going to push the share prices higher. So how do you track this? How do you look at insider buying? Well, like I said, they have these forms. So you could go to the SEC website or you could go to the investor relations of any of these companies and you could dig through and see who's buying and who's selling. But that's a pain. You're much better off using one of these websites that just kind of lists it out for you pretty easily. So one example is just Nasdaq.com. Like you can see right here, I pulled up AMD, Advanced Micro Devices. And you scroll down and they'll just tell you the number of insider trades. So this has zero over the last three months and zero over the last 12 months. There has been some selling though. And they give you more information like shares traded and all sorts of stuff. Now keep in mind that looking at this insider ownership also works a lot better on small caps because those smaller companies, the management do have an opportunity to own a lot more. Versus something like AMD or a huge tech company, the signal might not be as good. So this is a great tool that you can use, but like I said, it should only be one part of your total process. You should also be using other things like price action. And this course will teach you how to do it, whether you're a beginner or you're advanced, it's definitely gonna teach you how to use price action better. Cause our team has years of experience with this stuff and we've used it and we know what works and what doesn't. So we made sure to only include the stuff that works in this course. So if you wanna start this year off right and make sure your returns start out solid for this next decade, then definitely check out this course. There'll be a link down below in the description and comments and check it out now cause it closes Sunday. And there's also a 60 day money back guarantee. So if you don't like it, we'll just give you your money back. No risk to check it out. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you get email notifications of our new videos. We publish a lot. So subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Stay fouled out there. Bye.